asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. Busy old day today. I nearly lost the lead into the news. <laughs> I was momentarily distracted by something that flashed up on my screen, but I just woke up in the nick of time. Complacency is your biggest enemy when you've been doing this job as long as I've been doing it. Just about, I looked at the clock, Jesus, you're on. You're on. So we're 20 seconds late today. That's not good enough, but it is what it is. At Richie Allen Show on Twitter, that's my Twitter handle. Tweet the bejesus out of me. Tell me what you're thinking about the big stories. Now, thank you to so many of you who got in touch with me appalled at the treatment of the brilliant, the wonderful, decent human being that is Ray McGovern, of course, former CIA analyst, legendary CIA man Ray, who briefed six presidents, responsible for the daily briefing of six presidents, an honest man, as decent as they come. You will have seen yesterday, Ray attended the the confirmation hearing of uh, Gina Haspel. We all know that um, she's the acting head of the CIA and she's President Trump's nominee to replace Mike Pompeo as CIA chief. While there, Ray stood up and challenged her record on torture, her involvement with torture, and at least five police officers uh, took Ray very aggressively out of that hearing and... Uh, arrested him, basically threw him out uh, of the Senate Intelligence Committee hearing. Uh, Ray has been, he's, he's had this sort of thing happen to him before. He's been thrown out of hearings before. Uh, incredibly courageous man. Like I said, a very decent man. I have sent him an email, of course, and I've pointed out that many of the listeners of this programme, or listeners to this programme, have been in touch to express their disgust at the way he was treated. He's a tough guy, though, is Ray. Very tough guy. Doesn't scare easily. Doesn't bruise easily either. But fair play to him. So thanks for those messages and they've been passed on to Ray McGovern. So they have. Here's a question for you. They must be shouting this from the rooftops in the Old West, in the Midwest and in the Upper West. Where in tarnation are the Skripals? Can't sarn it. Dag nab it. Where the hell are the Skripals? Do you know... It's been, things move so quickly in terms of the 24-hour rolling news cycle. There must be dimwits amongst us who've forgotten about the Skripals. I'm sure they are. This is what the system does to people. There will be people, not you of course, but there will be people, oh, the Skripals. Oh oh, yeah, yeah, the Skripals. The Skripals. Sergei and Yulia Skripal, father, daughter, allegedly poisoned by Novichok in Salisbury weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Where are they? Yulia has been out of hospital for weeks. Weeks. Nobody has seen her. Sergei is still in hospital. He is, by the way. He's still in hospital. Even though weeks ago they said he was fine. He was okay. He was up and speaking and walking around. But now they're saying he might very well be in hospital for several more weeks. What's going on? And the media has also said that Yulia is living near the hospital and is slipping in to see her dad. How the hell is she managing that without the glare of the mainstream media? Well, because the media couldn't organise a piss up in a brewery. The media couldn't find an elephant in the snow with diarrhoea. So the Russian ambassador to the UK has understandably, again posed the question, have they been kidnapped? Have the Skripals been abducted? Here's Alexander Yakovenko. The relations between two countries are really very low and uh, in the eyes of the Russian public opinion, the lack of access to our citizens uh, puts a lot of questions. Uh, And that's why, you know, I explain what we feel about that. Uh, And uh, I said that uh, we, we, we have all the uh, let's say uh, every every 
kind of feeling uh, to uh, to think that these people were abducted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they've been abducted, right? Said Alexander Yakovenko, bit of a star he's become in his media briefings. So Sky News correspondent Martin Brunt, he's their main crime correspondent. Martin Brunt is on the case. Don't get too excited. Martin couldn't find his hairy old arse with two hands and a map of the area. It's not the first time the Russian government uh, has accused the British authorities of abduction. And his point really is that uh, he, the Russian government, haven't seen Sergei Skripal or uh, his daughter Yulia. Now, there's a very good reason, certainly, that they haven't seen Sergei, because he is still in hospital, as far as we know. As far as we know, says Martin Brunt. You're not much of a senior crime correspondent. Martin! Don't you have any sources in the police, Martin? You've been on the beat for over 40 years, man. As a journo, I've only been a journo for, well, less than 20 years, and I've got a list of police officer confidant contacts, lackeys, informers, as long as my arm. Somebody must be able to tell you something. Where? are the Skripals. And I understand it is likely still to be there for several weeks. Um, Yulia, his daughter, was freed, uh, released from hospital uh, some weeks ago. She's issued two statements, but again, the ambassador's point is that he needs to see and listen to her in her own words. Her statements uh, have made it clear that she understands that uh, the Russians have offered to come and see her, a consular visit, uh, but equally she's made it clear that she's not interested uh, in, uh, in talking to consular staff. At the moment is what she said uh, in her last statement, um, but she is aware that the offer still stands. Wow. He's useful, isn't he? He's about as useful as tits on a bull, Martin Brunt. Jesus wept. What's the rest of the media doing? Is the media asking anybody in authority, can we please see some live action footage of the Skripals? Please, can we get a Skype conference call with Yulia just for a second so we can tell our readers that she is hale and hearty? Here's Martin Brunt. Now, the ambassador has also accused the British media of not interviewing Yulia. Uh, believe me, we have asked, uh, and we are being told that that's not possible at the moment. Um, I also <laughs> understand that one of the reasons, perhaps the biggest reason, that she isn't doing uh, an interview with the media is simply because of the condition she's in. When what condition is she in? Oh, Christ, she was released from hospital. We were told she was well. She was up and about. Other media outlets are reporting that she's visiting Daddy in the hospital in Salisbury. Where is she? Where is she? For Brunt to be sitting there on Sky News, making the pathetic limp... I'm not going to swear again. Excuse, excuse that we haven't had access to Yulia because she's not in the condition to talk to us is preposterous. When she was released from hospital, it was made clear that uh, that she still needed uh, hospital or medical treatment of some sort. Where is she? I honestly don't she? know, but it's again, it's understood that she's probably not far from Salisbury. Maybe she's being uh, kept at Porton Down. But Maybe she's been kept at Porton Down. Wow! Did you hear that, dear listener? Just in case you missed it, listen again. To Porton Down, but ah, be Jesus! Go back a little bit further, Richie. Here we go. Maybe she's being uh, kept at Porton Down against her will. Maybe. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Why would she be kept at Porton Down? You think the last thing Yulia would want is to be kept in a big building with a load of chemical weapons? It just gets madder and madder. More farcical by the day. But she wouldn't be too far from the hospital that has aided her remarkable recovery because of that ongoing medical treatment. And, uh, and I don't know this for certain, but it's thought that she probably 
is from time to time visiting her father in hospital. Yes, from time to time she's slipping into the hospital, hence the analogy about the elephant and the diarrhoea. How have they not been able to get a snap of the Yulia? Unless there are underground entrances to the hospital and she is being spirited in and out in secret to see Daddy, who we were told weeks ago was hunky-dory. Do you know what I think is going on here? I think Alexander Yakovenko, brilliant a man as he is, is actually... I don't think he's right. I don't think they were kidnapped. I think they are in on the hoax. I think... Sergei is some sort of triple, quadruple, quintuplet type uh, secret agent. And, and, and as part of this anti-Russian agenda. And I think Yulia was just dragged along for the ride. Sergei never left MI5, is what I think. Or MI6, I should say. That's what's going on here. They're in America somewhere. It's madness, isn't it? It's ridiculous. Fair play to the Russians for not leaving it go. Shame on the UK media for not asking a few simple questions like pull the other one, lads. Loads of them very funny tweets on this. Cartoon drunk says they might find Skripal in South America riding Shargar on the beach. Yeah, why not? Andy Newman tweets the Skripals are being hosted by Lord Lucan and Osama Bin Laden. David Stanford tweets Richie... He will be in hospital till it's all been forgotten. Do you know what, David? There may be some truth in that as well. I said it earlier. Such is the diminishing brain capacity of the population because of the bombardment with the chemtrails and the bombardment with the Wi-Fi and everything else that people's memories are shot to pieces. Goldfish have more memory of the Skripals now than most people do. People have forgotten about it. They've moved on. <laughs> I'm telling you. Ask people. Not people who get their news from independent media sources. But ask regular people, the script pals. They'll probably have to think about it for a couple of seconds. Oh yeah, the script pals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weren't they poisoned by the Russians? Maybe not. 17 minutes past the hour. This is the Richie Allen Show. Live on richieallen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2. And tune in radio. Trigger warning as well. Karen tweets, Evening Richie, this has been the biggest cock up. Wow, is she even alive? And I tell you what, Karen, you might be right. I might be wrong because I don't know anything. I'm just guessing that the script pals are in on this from the get go. And they're either in Bermuda now, in the Triangle, or they're in Jamaica, Barbados, somewhere else. I don't know. Let's talk a bit about the biggest story of the day, which I didn't lead with because I'll be talking to. Maria Heller about this shortly, but that is Israel's claim that it struck all of Iran's military infrastructure in Syria in what Israel says is its biggest assault on Iranian military bases in Syria since the start of the problems in Syria. Israel said we were retaliating because 20 rockets were fired at Israeli military positions in the Golan Heights overnight. Syria's military said Israel's aggression killed three people and predictably the Zionist whore masters and whore mistresses in the UK and US governments admonished Iran. Yes, Iran. Israel can fire missiles at Syria. They can hospitalise and treat Islamic State nutters before carting them back to the battlefields. Israel can murder children at the right of return protests. Not a peep, but Iran defends itself against never-ending provocation by Netanyahu and Theresa May and Donald Trump can't get to a microphone quick enough to condemn Iran, which has never attacked another country, has never invaded another country and is no threat to peace and prosperity anywhere else. Now, Rosemary Hollis is a professor of Middle East Policy Studies at City University in London. Rosemary had some very interesting insights into what's going on, including on why Russia hosted the nutcase from Tel Aviv while Israel was bombing Syria. I hinted at this last night. Kind of curious 
kind of curious, I would have said, Putin hosting Netanyahu while Israel was doing what Israel does, breaking international law. Here's Rosemary Hollis speaking with Sky News. Uh, the other front that I think we should anticipate action on is Iran itself. And given what President Trump has said, you, you've now got the US, unlike during the Obama regime, trying to restrain the Israelis from bellicosity towards Iran. You've got the Trump administration almost more eager than the Israelis to go after the Iranian regime. So give them half an excuse, and I think we should anticipate <clears throat> some kind of strike by Israel, by the United States, by both, on targets inside Iran if they get an excuse. Is there any way of bringing these countries back from the brink, or is it more a case of there will be war, it's just a matter of when? Well, notice that the Russians have not done anything to protect their co-conspirator in Syria. And I wouldn't be in the least bit surprised if, from the Russian point of view, uh, it has been very useful to have the Iranians helping to prop up the Assad regime, helping to take out all his opponents, and indeed helping to take out IS along with the United States and its Western allies. So that phase of the war, Iran was useful for the Russian agenda. But now, uh, having Iran organizing too much in the way of Syrian politics presumably does not suit the Russians. And so the Israelis have done them a service in that sense in lessening the clout of the Iranians inside Syria. What a very interesting deduction. What a very interesting conclusion to reach by Rosemary Hollis. Not sure I agree with her. Not sure I disagree either. It's an interesting one that Russia might be fed up of Iran and might be a little bit concerned with Iran's influence in Syria. I don't know. It's as plausible as any other explanation for what's going on there. Very interesting. But where's it all going to end? Well, here, Rosemary Hollis is very clear. She says it's all about regime change. Rosemary Hollis. The war in Syria. And now, as of the Americans pulling out of the Iran nuclear deal and thereby effectively sounding its death knell, I, I, th I think we're talking about a big confrontation in the Middle East uh, on a par with the efforts made by the Americans, where are we now, 2003, 15 years ago, to uh, remake the region. It went wrong in Iraq. We'll have to see whether their confidence that they can remake Iran, fundamentally change Iranian power in the region, and get away with it without there being some unexpected consequences. But Iran doesn't usually respond directly. Their tactic or strategy hitherto over the last, let's say, three decades is to operate slightly under the surface, to get into the fabric of a society, be it Iraq or Syria or Lebanon to have an effect on the politics, but not to do a head-on invasion, for example, um, and not necessarily to do a head-on military attack um, launched with missiles and aircraft and even land forces. They haven't done that in the last three decades. So they haven't done it ever, Rosemary. So the Iranian response is, going, is not going to be straightforward. Uh, whether it is successful or not, we have to wait and see. Rosemary Hollis speaking there with Sky News today, Professor of Politics at the University of London, Professor of Middle East Policy Studies, I should say, at City University, London.